fancy, delicious, super yummy. Hello guys, and welcome back to the Super Yummy Kitchen. Don't forget to wash your hands before you start cooking. Happy cooking! I've been out for my walk and I couldn't wait to get back into the kitchen to start cooking again together. And today we're going to cook something that is truly amazing. A veggie tasty triangle. Not to be confused with the isosceles or the equilateral or even the musical triangle. This is a right angle veggie tasty triangle like no other. So let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. Uh, let's just take you through today's ingredients for the veggie tasty triangles. Um, we have fantastic carrots, um, some potatoes. Now both the potatoes and the carrot um, have been blanched really quickly so that they're put into simmering water for five, six minutes and then just refreshed in cold water in this colander really, really quickly so that they keep their colour and they look really, really lovely. Um, I've also got some finely diced cucumber, um, a medium onion that's just been finely chopped as well and some peas, some garlic, and then a couple of little extra things. We have some spices that we have turmeric, which we'll talk a bit more about, um, and a curry, a uh, little bit of curry powder, some a mango chutney, a tiny little bit of oil, and then corn. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right. Oh, nearly forgot the prize thing. The thing that's going to make this crispy and delicious is phyllo pastry. The how weird and amazing and phyllo pastry. I think of all the pastries of the world, this is my favorite. So phyllo pastry, that's the ingredients, but let's get on with the cooking. Um, I'm gonna cover the phyllo pastry because it has a tendency to dry out a little bit. So I've got a slightly damp tea towel and that's going to stop it from splitting and cracking because it's really important that we can do lots of different things with it. And you'll see that in just a moment. Make sure you cover your phyllo pastry with a damp tea towel. We're going to get the pan nice and hot and I'm going to pop in just a tiny little bit. I've got rapeseed oil here, a little bit of rapeseed. Wait for that to get to temperature and it starts to go a little bit ripply in the pan and you can start to see that it starts to move around a little bit quicker and I'm now going to pop in the onions and this is just one medium onion Carefully chop your onions into small pieces. Now it's really important that when we actually start to sweat off the onion, the colour will change a little bit. What we're looking for is it to kind of go see-through. So it's, it's shiny and more see-throughy. And then we know that it's really cooked. And what happens is that the onion, the fiery, oniony, almost spicy heat disappears. And what we actually start to get is a, is a much sweeter, see-throughy, softer onion. And the smell is lovely. Reminds me of fairgrounds and hot dogs and all kinds of things. And the, oh, the steam. Now the onions are nice and shiny. We're going to add a clove or a couple of cloves of garlic, depending on how garlicky you like things. I like it quite garlicky, so I've got a couple of cloves in there. And we're going to mix that in. Make sure that that's nicely mixed in with the onion. And that, of course, just smells of garlic bread. One of those lovely things that we all really enjoy. And I'm just going to pop that. So now I'm going to add a little bit of spice. So I've got um, curry powder here. So you can use curry powder or curry paste. It really doesn't matter at all, whatever you've got in the fridge. And again, it's about how spicy you like things or how moody, mildy you like things. It's completely up to you. I like things quite spicy, so I'm gonna put a really heaped teaspoonful of curry in there. These really do taste best with a bit of curry powder in them. Remember, paste is just as good. Now, I've added the curry, and the other thing that I'm going to add is the turmeric. Now turmeric is always in most curry powders and it's the one that's really, really yellow, a really sunny, shiny yellow colour. So I do like the flavour, which is kind of like warm and perfumey, but I also like the fact that it makes things such an amazing colour. 
And the first thing that we're going to add to the pan is the potatoes. Now the reason why I like the potatoes is that when they go in, of course, you can see they just look very potatoey. But once we put them in the pan with the turmeric and with the curry powder, they change colour completely. And when you bite into your vegetation triangle, you see these wonderful, wonderful colours, which is one of the things I really like about them. Look at them change colour, wow! So now you can see they've gone that really lovely, sunshiny, egg yolky colour. And the smells as the spices start to warm up. And it's really important that we cook and warm and toast those spices to release all the flavour first. That's why we put them in first, which makes such a, such a big difference when you're making any curries or using any spices. It really, really changes the whole flavour. So the next thing we're going to add now is really we're just going to pile in all the other vegetables. So we go in with the lovely peas, lots and lots of peas. We go in with a little dice of carrots as well, lots and lots of carrot. Lovely carrot. And then, then we're going to go in with them um, with corn which is one of my favourite veggie ingredients. It's really, really good. It's got lots of protein in it. It's really healthy for you and really important for us all now. It's really healthy for the planet. Now this is, this is corn mince. And I'm just popping that in there now. If you want to use it straight from the freezer, you can, um, but you can also let it frost. It's completely and utterly up to you. So that's the corn mince going in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give it a little stir, like I do big stirs and a little stir. So big stirs. all coming together really nicely now. The, the vegetables, all the spices that we used, and the corn is working really well. And corn, it's um, obviously these are veggie tasty triangles, so that's one of the reasons why I chose corn. And the thing about corn is that it, it really takes on the flavours of things really, really, really well. We used corn at home for all sorts. It's so versatile. So, just a couple more ingredients to add now. Um, I need to glue those things together a little bit. So, I'm just going to pop in um, a teaspoonful of mango chutney. And what that'll do, that'll make things kind of stick together. And when we start to make our parcels, it'll make things a little bit easier. And kind of act like a sort of, almost like a veggie corny glue with all the ingredients. And um, the other thing, now if you haven't got this, it doesn't matter. It's one of my favourite herbs. It looks um, a little bit like parsley which you may have seen but this is um this is coriander and it has the most amazing smell it's kind of it's it's grassy but it's got a, a really powerful smell quite a strong taste and what i'm going to do here is that i'm not actually going to use the leaves i'm going to use the stalks and the stalks are even more flavorsome and more fragrant than the leaves so i'm just going to take the this actual big bunch I never knew that stalks had more flavour in them. Pop them straight into the pan. So what we need to do then is just basically, we're not really cooking at this point, we're just warming everything together so all the flavours start to blend, the lovely colour of the turmeric, the kind of fragrance, that lovely curry powder perfume that's wafting around the kitchen with the peas and the carrots. So it all starts to kind of get a bit squidgy, um, a little bit the flavours just grow and grow and grow. And when we've got to that point, sort of three, four minutes, we need to just set it aside to cool and then we start making the veggie tasty triangles. I have my phyllo pastry, which I've kept covered with a damp tea towel to keep it nice and moist. I also need to get my lovely filling, which is now cool beautifully. And just look at that colour, that lovely yellowy orangey colour, it's fantastic. It's the colour of sunshine. I started to make some triangles earlier. So this is a little bit tricky, but it's definitely, definitely worth the effort. And if they're not neat first time, practice makes perfect. Just keep going. And you know, they taste amazing, whatever shapes you end up with. Whether they are isosceles, equilateral or right angle triangles, they all taste super scrummy, super yummy. So it doesn't really matter. Rightio, so let's get this amazing pastry. The pastry that's more like paper than pastry, and it feels lovely. Obviously, make sure you start to wash your hands before this, but really enjoy picking this up. You can actually almost see things through it. It's kind of like, it's, it feels like fabric. It's not like the kind of pastry that, that we're used to at all, but it's really delicate, so we do need to keep it moist, as I said earlier on. So that big oblong, we need to divide that into three. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is to take the bottom side and just hold it, fold it into the middle until the top side is the same size. And I'm going to just fold, squish that down and then I pop that over there and do the same thing again. So what we end up with now is some really nice clear lines to work with. And the oblong is now divided into three individual pieces. So, taking scissors, which seems quite funny, cutting pastry with scissors, but it's great. It'll be great practice for when you start to make the bunting that's on the exercise that we want you to all do. So, I'm going to start to cut along the line that I can see. Cutting. And it cuts ever so easily because it's so paper thin. In fact, if you didn't know it was phyllo pastry, you might even think that it was paper. Pop that bit there, and then again, pop another line. So that now we end up with three pieces of phyllo. If you go a little bit wibbly wobbly, it doesn't matter. Pop that down there. And so now I have sort of a long piece of phyllo pastry. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the bottom of the phyllo pastry so, so it actually makes a square. So you can see there, the actual pastry there has made a square. So then we're going to unfold that again and I can see a line. So now I have a square at the end of my oblong of phyllo pastry. It's very shapey today, very, very shapey. So I'm actually going to paint that phyllo with a little bit of melted butter. Not too much, just try and be as delicate as you can with the melted butter. You can use um, olive oil if you wanted, or you can use uh, rapeseed oil. It really doesn't matter. But what this is, it makes it super crunchy. So I can still see my little square at the end. And now I'm going to take my old fashioned dessert spoon, one of my friendly dessert spoons, and I'm going to pop a little dessert spoonful at the end. And just pop that kind of into the middle of the square, as you can see there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it at right angles. This is the fiddly bit, so you may need to practice this. Go on, have a go. Do your best triangles ever. So we go over, and then we can see the square makes a triangle. And then we fold it again at the right angle. And as you can see, some bits may fall out, that doesn't matter, we can use them later on. We end up with another triangle and we keep going all the way down. Once you get past halfway, it gets a little bit easier and you can start to see the shape. But as you can see, we start to half the square, keep that right angle all the time because this isn't just any veggie tasty triangle, this is a right angled tasty triangle. So we keep working our way all the way down gets a lot easier towards the end and that's really great so that we end up with a little tucky bit and it's really important that when you lay it on the baking sheet which has got a little bit of oil on it too that it actually put it down where the actual tucky bit is underneath and what you end up with is a perfect tasty triangle tiny little bit of the oil or butter at the end there you end up with a veggie tasty triangle ready for the oven pop them in the oven for 200 degrees for 10 minutes or until golden then let them cool for a little bit so now it's time to take them out of the oven we've um we've let these cool a little bit and look at the color absolutely lovely a little bit shiny crispy oscar can you hear how crunchy they are that's impressive andrew what can I have them with? Unicorn hummus. A little bit of unicorn hummus and a little bit of uh, pea pom slime, no less. One of my favourite slimes. And we've put an extra little bit of mint in there. And I've also put some cucumber in there too. And I think the veggie tasty triangles will be delicious dipped in pea pom slime. Let's have a go. Mm. <laughs> a little bit spicy, really 
really crispy. A really lovely little snack. I do hope you enjoy making them. Be nice to people. I look forward to seeing you again soon in the super yummy kitchen. See you now. <laughs> Georgie, I've never had phyllo pastry before. Is it better for me to than normal pastry? Yes, Darcy. Phyllo pastry contains less fat and it's super crunchy and yummy. We are using corn instead of meat in this recipe too, as reducing the amount of meat we eat is good for the planet. Yum! Can't wait to try them. Me too, Darcy. The good thing about using spices like turmeric is that they add lots of flavour and even colour. It also means you don't need to add salt, so they're better for us. That's great! I love the spicy flavour in these tasty triangles too. Oh, Darcy! They look amazing. Well done. Don't forget to check out the bunting activity. Available at loveschoolmeals.co.uk This recipe was made in partnership with corn. Next time, Chef Andrew is cooking Crazy Cupboard Casu with Chef John all the way from Australia. Simply delicious, super yummy. See you then.